Good morning, everyone. It's a great privilege for me to present Antion Biosciences to you, and thank you to the organizers for the kind invitation. So I'll be talking to you about uh, our technology that's been developing over several years right now, and uh, although we have this exceptionally broad title, um, we have a platform technology which allows to multiplex engineer cells from various sources into cell and gene therapy products, and that's why we have this wide title. We're applying it to specific disease areas, or to specific products, like uh, particularly focused on off-the-shelf engineered cells, and I'll tell you a little bit more about our journey in the slides to follow. So I think I don't need to tell anybody this, but certainly the industry is really booming considering what we have going right now. The good news is, and what we have learned, is that these cell and gene therapies are the, have the promise for one of treatments and definitely have the potential to cure ways that other treatments simply just cannot do. So we've got to capitalize on that. Key issues that we certainly have to address all the time are safety, efficacy, and feasibility. Safety and efficacy are part and parcel of any drug development, hopefully leading to the point of cure in patients. But of course, feasibility, we've got to make these treatments widely accessible as much as we can. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit here about our journey as Antion, right? And, uh, and, and it speaks to um, where we are today. And we're progressing really now, finally, to a point where I can comfortably say we have something really powerful in our hands, and we're starting to develop really high-value therapeutic assets. So from a platform point of view, we're based on a microRNA-mediated gene silencing, which I'll talk to you about in a couple of slides to follow. But in principle, we think that given our recent data and, and studying the space for quite some time, we think we have best-in-class gene silencing. We have our own proprietary technology. Um, it's highly efficient and it's tunable, so we can tune down silencing to a desired level. And we can hit up to six targets simultaneously, which we've shown repeatedly in, uh, in previous events. And there's negligible off-target risk given our strategy of design. We're taking this in producing products, right? And the products at this point for us are off-the-shelf cell therapies. These are next-level cell therapies, the ones that require specific tuning of markers, the ones that require multiplex engineering. We want to create off-the-shelf because we believe this is the only way that we can address the global need for cell and gene therapies. These are all multiplex engineered where our technology really fits the space. This is our niche, and this is where we should be playing. And we design them really with safety and durable treatment outcomes in mind. So these products are now being used to create a very exciting pipeline, right? So once you develop a product, we know it can be applied in different areas. So we're addressing unmet clinical needs. We look for diseases where there's a real clinical need, but because we have this unique multiplex and tunable capability, we're addressing technical engineering needs that other technologies simply cannot do right now. Uh, and of course, given the fact that we create these with really high efficiency and we're aiming to develop off-the-shelf treatments, uh, we're also addressing the manufacturing need to hopefully be part and parcel of the future of cell and gene therapy and rolling out these treatments globally. Our tech and all of these assets have been used um, and externally validated with partners already. So we have a, a partnership we have with Allergen Therapeutics and ongoing with Penn Medicine and some of this data is being revealed uh, and will be published later in the year. So our technology really aims to address key areas um, of cell and gene therapy, unlocking the true potential, right? So the key benefits are, as I've already partly mentioned, the safety issues, because given the fact that we could add genes to cells, which everyone can really do, right? The question is, how do you also knock out or silence at the same time? So you either use a second modality, or you make it part and parcel of one, and that's what we do. Everything is built together into a single construct. So it's straight down the line, gene augmentation, protein expression, and silencing, which gives you the exceptional efficiency and the need for only a single insertion, right, or a single modification, and all of, everything is carried in one. So safety is, without a question, um, um, a, an area that we're addressing in the scenario, um, and efficiency, as I stated before. We want to make these treatments widely accessible, and that's why we're doing this and creating off-the-shelf therapies and decreasing the cost of goods off per, on a per-manufacturing run, but also thereafter in terms of developing these treatments. And then we have great flexibility. Everything is modular, and I'll show you that in the slides to follow. And of course, as I mentioned before, it's tunable, so we can silence expression to different levels. So this is what it looks like, right? So if you want to look at adding multiple genes or silencing multiple genes, so we have this multimodal capability. And this is a, a, a schematic of the gene construct. On the right-hand side, you really have typical gene augmentation, typical gene addition, nothing special, right? But you have the silencing effect. We simply bolt on our proprietary technology, the microRNA. And every little hairpin loop you see there is specifically designed to a target of interest. 
We design microRNAs against that target. We get a range of silencing for those. We put them on the shelf, and we create treatments based on a modular design and fashion depending on the indication, right? So you get both the multi-gene addition and silencing from within a single gene construct. And we've been able to show at least up to eight modulations in a single engineering step, and we're currently working on a ninth one, which we believe is perfectly feasible. So what are we? So we are a microRNA company. We've been doing this for over a decade now, and we, we really believe that with, with our experience over the last years and the, the volume of data we've generated in partnerships and with our current data, we think we have something really special. It's all about the microRNA design itself. Not every microRNA is the same. Ones are different, are processed at different rates and with different efficiencies, which risk off-target effect and dilute the on-target effect of the microRNA. Our architecture is robust and processed with high fidelity. The gene architecture that drives expression is very important too. We realized this after our first generation prototype product. Not being able to express more than two or three microRNAs was a limitation for us. We optimized the construct, it's size optimized, considerably smaller, and this allows us to silence up to six different genes. We think we can do more, but we've demonstrated six with quite convincing data. And then we realized that design is absolutely critical up front. So we've developed an in our software program called Antion Design Studio which allows us to really make target-specific designs and make it really tissue-specific as needed. So we really filter out and we design upfront as much as possible, and we're getting great efficiencies with this. So here's just an example of some of the data that we have. So uh, we, we think we have best-in-class because we can silence multiple genes, um, and we've shown this against many of these. So the top ones are just some examples. We silenced TCR alpha beta exceptional, exceptionally, HLA1, HLA2, and CD52. So in all of these figures, the histogram, the blue one, shows the reduction in silencing, right? The gray reflects the unmodified cells, and this is what you see um, on, the, on the graph, on the histograms. And then at the bottom, we're also looking at how do we take it to the next level, right? So what are the extra molecules we need to silence? And, and these ones enhance durability. If you want to silence PD-1, TIM-3, TGBR-2, molecules that are particularly pertinent in improving efficacy in solid tumors or in other areas, these are ones we silence. We also silence CD-7 with high efficiency, and there's a specific reason for that. That's for fratricide resistance, and I'll, I'll talk about that in our lead candidate. So this is where we fit, right? Our platform is widely applicable, as I mentioned to you before. We, we think we have a really powerful technology. We've now got six patent filings, and we have a couple more coming through throughout the year. The two core ones are granted. Um, we can deliver these constructs with any delivery method, right? Uh, that can be given to cells uh, of, of any type, as long as you have the delivery nailed down and you know where you go, you're going. Um, and from this, we can develop gene therapies or cell-based gene therapies, and you can just think about multitude of applications. We're focusing on those that are highlighted, and we've demonstrated data for those highlighted in orange. So here is our pipeline. So these are all preclinical assets, and we're hoping to progress as quickly as possible to the clinic um, with at least one of them in the coming years. So three of them are called MyCar7, MyCar19, and MyCarX. The MyCar7 is a multiplex engineered car against CD7 positive malignancies. These are for T cell malignancy, NK cell malignancy, where there's a high clinical unmet need. Um, and of course, there's a subgroup of AML patients who could qualify these treatments. The MyCar19, we, we're employing for autoimmune disease, so we know the CD19s are working well, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that. For solid tumors, we also have an undisclosed target. But the principle here is that we express a car, right, that's the gene addition, and we multiplex silence. See these all as a base construct for TCR silencing, for making the cells hyperimmunogenic with HLA-1 and HLA-2 silencing. But going beyond that, right, not many folks can achieve this. So this is for us the differentiator. How do you make these treatments really durable? How do you make these treatments more effective? How do we overcome the current challenges of engineering and certain treatments? Because they're not reaching the threshold of efficacy. So for the first product, we silence CD7. This is fratricide. If you don't silence CD7, the cars kill themselves and you have decreased product um, output. GMCSF is a molecular cytokine that may be perceived as being overproduced in the context of a CD19 car and exacerbating immune response in autoimmune disease. And PD1 and TGFBR2, these are well-established markers that we know could most likely improve um, efficacy against solid tumors and other CAR T indications. So first step, of course, can we use our tech to create an LSL? This was the first thing we had to do, and we demonstrated that very efficiently. We presented this at ICT last year. In principle, we could silence CD, 
uh, the TCR and CD3 expression with exceptional efficiency. And here on the left, we show that when you expose modified cells to OCT3, an activation molecule, you see a substantial activation in control cells, but a flat line when it comes to um, activation of TCR silent cells, demonstrating the functional benefit of our tech. When you put these cells into mice, in a graft with host model, you see very clearly um, this is the effect um, where there is uh, where modified cells, where um, mice receiving modified cells have 100% um, survival. So MyCar7 is our lead candidate for T-cell malignancy. It's a small patient population, but very few treatment options once these patients fail uh, chemotherapy. Um, we know that we're addressing the unmet need, but also technical unmet need, which is engineering you don't want to engineer malignant cells from a patient since these are T cell malignant, so you've got to create an allo product, so TCR silencing makes sense. Fratricide and durability are key issues I've already addressed to an extent. And this is what the product looks like. We have a car, we're expressing a safety switch right now, and we silence uh, the four molecules, TCR, HLA1, HLA2, and, H and CD7, for the reasons I've stated before um, to you. So here is the, just an example of efficiency. As a proof of concept product, right, so we went ahead to produce um, this multiplex engineered MyCar7, which has five modifications. HLA2 is not here. We do now have the data for that to demonstrate it. But in principle, a key thing to look for is on the histogram where the CD7 against TCR, your modified cells are the ones in the bottom left corner, a distinctly pure population of cells that you can only engineer by virtue of the construct and the way we design um, these therapies. On the right hand side, I just show you exceptional efficiency in terms of expressing the car and the safety switch you're getting 80 to 90% expression, so perfect coupling of the two, and exceptional efficiency of TCR, HLA, and CD7. These are clearly bridging on knockout status, and in fact, when you look at the data on the raw data, you can see there's very little expression residual in these cells, a multiplex engineered cell. And the key crux data is really, how do these cells perform? Do they maintain efficacy? Even though they're multiplex engineered, can they perform as they should? And yes, they do. If we put these into mice and uh, we lay the tumor burden with a CD7 positive tumor cell line, we infuse the CAR T cells. On the right, you see we did three different dose levels, low, medium, and high dose. On the far left, you see control mice that receive only the vehicle and a non-specific CAR, a CD19 CAR, right? You see significant tumor burden growing and the mice having to be sacrificed at day 20. And on the right-hand side, the far right, you can see at the high dose, even just a couple of days after, we saw significant depletion of tumor, which was maintained um, throughout, and you see, we see the effect of the low dose taking effect thereafter. On the right is a linear scale, on the bottom is a, is a log scale if you want to see the separation better. But in principle, not only does it work, but it strictly performs according to dose. So we know that, that the efficacy and the coupling of design works very well. Okay, autoimmune disease. We gave it quite a bit of thought um, as to whether we want to head this way, and uh, we realized that there is, there is certainly opportunity for it, and it's the next. It's the next challenge for CAR-2, right? So on the left-hand side, uh, we did some homework. We looked at all the clinical registered trials that are out there to date. These are the, this is the rate of registration, right? Look at 23 and 24, and we are only into the first quarter, uh, into the well, second quarter, sorry, <laughs> of 2024, right? Look at the number of trials that have been registered for autoimmune disease. Of those, the top cap are those that are allergenic, and we think this is where opportunity lies for us, right? If you translate just these indications for which are currently being treated, severe autoimmune disease, this translates to a patient population of about 27 million. Compare that to solid tumors and hematological malignancy, and you see what we have to deal with if CAR-T actually becomes a feasible treatment for these patients. Manufacturing will be a significant challenge. Uh, off the shelf would be a significant opportunity. So when we look at what are the key features for designing the perfect product, this is them here, right? anticipating the need for autoimmune disease. We've learned a lot from CD19 cars and BCMA and CD20s over the years. What would be the need in two, three years' time? We're an early stage company. What could we foresee as being the challenges down the line? And these are those, it's clear, safety is absolutely paramount, right? You don't wanna, you, you don't wanna deal with lymphodepletion in these patients, clinicians don't have appetite for that. You wanna make sure that there's no exacerbated hyperimmune response in these patients, and therefore you make it as minimal immunogenic as possible. You've got to meet the global demand. I showed you the patient numbers. The only way to meet that demand in a reasonable fashion would be using um, an allergenic off-the-shelf product, in our opinion. Um, and you've got to decrease the cost of goods to make these treatments to service the need. Um, do not compromise efficacy. If you make a product that's easily accessible, don't compromise efficacy, right? You've got to make sure you maintain deep depletion of auto-reactive immune cells. 
And on the right hand side, considering these three parameters, the ideal CAR T fits slap bang in the middle, right? How do we design a treatment that addresses these three key needs? And this is what we went to do. So we have a CD19 car. We've done a lot of CD19 car work as part of our platform validation. Um, is a safety switch, and we silence these different molecules for the reasons I mentioned before. We can very efficiently manufacture cells, right, distinctly pure, as I indicated previously to you. So there's an autologous car on the top right, a TCR silence on the top left, and a TCR and HLA1 silenced on the bottom left. Um, these are clearly distinctly pure population cells, which we're very proud of and, and wanted to show. The key thing is, can we tune the silencing? So we know if, we, if you knock out HLA1, you need to protect against CD8 T cells, but also NK cells. Can you find a sweet spot? You either need to co-express a molecule to give back non-classical HLA1, or you can silence to a point. And we've been able to show we can silence with microRNAs to very specific levels. We can tune the silencing down to 80, 90, 95%. And there's clear histograms there that demonstrate the beautiful control that we have with our constructs. We know that very clearly when we silence on the left-hand side, you look at the NK cell depletion, it's perfectly linear, right? The more you silence, the more NK cells reject. But what is the effect on CD8 cells? And this is key for us. When you silence beyond 80%, it's very clear that you have equal protection. So you achieve functional silencing beyond 80%. You don't need knockout. And this is a very clear effect. And you gain the benefit of protecting from NK cells. This, we think, is really something unique and something I believe we're the first to show in T cells in a car product. So do these cells kill? Yeah, they maintain efficacy. Absolutely, there they are. Um, I, I, on a, on a, on a short-term killing and a recursive killing, the efficacy is, is undoubtedly there. So with that, I'd like to thank you for your time and uh, very excited to be able to build in this company uh, and these opportunities in the future. Thank you.